Guys, welcome back to the Community Council, and thanks again for joining us today. If you're just tuning in, this is the show that talks about everything great in the community. We're also here to show love to all of the amazing nonprofits out there trying to make a difference. And on the phone with me, I have Mr. Scott. Mr. Scott, how are you? I'm doing wonderful, wonderful. It's a beautiful day, so I can't complain. I am so happy to talk to you. Let everybody know, where are you from? Um, I am a person, I'm, really, I'm originally from New Jersey, but now living here in Orange County um, and serving as the president and CEO of Community Action Partnership of Orange County. Community Action Partnership of Orange County. What is its mission and vision? Well, awesome. Great question. Thank you for asking that. Um, our, our organization was born out of the war on poverty more than 50 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and our, our, our mission is really simple. Um, we aim to serve as a catalyst for creating vibrant communities um, and empowering people with the resources that they need when they need them. Really focus on, you know, help eradicating poverty for families, communities in our region. And how do you do that? There's, there's several different ways we do it. We have a number of different pro- programs. Um, and so we try to do it by meeting immediate needs. Um, mm-hmm. And then we also, try, we also try to do what we call community development. So there are a number of ways we meet immediate needs. One is through um, uh, attacking hunger and food insecurity. Mm-hmm. So we, op- we operate a, a big food bank. We run on two food banks here in Orange County. Um, we do on a, on a normal year. This has not, certainly not been a normal year, but on a normal year, we do about 24,000 boxes of food for seniors every, every single month and about 25 million pounds of food every single year. Um, and then we have a number of, of partners who also get food from us through our distribution center. And, and probably together with our three or 400 partners, we probably distribute up to about 200,000 people every single month. Um, so, so we really try to attack food, food insecurity and hunger. Um, and the other way we do, we, we do energy, what we call utility assistance, where we help individuals who are struggling and paying the utility bills. We also do that. So there's a number of different ways that we try to meet immediate needs, help um, um, immediately. And then there's, there's more long-term programs that we do around financial empowerment, um, affordable housing, workforce development, after-school programs, a number of different programs we do really trying to use a whole family model Mm -hmm. um, to really help families dig themselves out of poverty. I want to know what made you even get started with this? You know, I I think for me, it's always been um, part of my DNA to to help people. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's, I don't think there's anything more powerful than working with a group of people who are, have the same goal, same mission in mind, which is to help the community, to help others. And so I think it's been part of my DNA since I was a kid. And, and so I, I, I'm fortunate enough to be leading one of the um, most prominent organizations um, that I think is in Southern California in terms of what we do and an issue that I'm very passionate about um, as it relates to really helping people. Absolutely. Um, so, so, yeah. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, that's it. That's it. I apologize for cutting you off. No, um, I, I was. I think it's really interesting when people say that they are, you know, born to do this or just always wanting to help. Like, I feel like that defines what type of person you really are. Oh yeah, I mean, it's you know, there's, you, we we all have options, um, and at the same time, I I think I have my foundation and my base is my faith, mm-hmm. and so I, I look at the work that I do as a calling. Um, it's more than a job. It's more than you know. Um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell this to a lot of people, but I, I want to, you know, I would obviously would help people for free um, through volunteerism or other ways. But I get a chance, you know, you know, some people, you know, have to force themselves to go to work every day, and I, I'm fortunate enough that I get to go to work. Mm-hmm. I get to do what I do, and for me, um, there's no greater feeling than that than knowing when someone says thank you and or you help someone really dig themselves out of a situation. There's no greater calling. Um, I feel um, that, that that exists and happen to other people. Or do you have one of those stories that you just come across and it's like this, it makes everything that you do worth it? Well, you know, there, there's always amazing stories. So right, right now we just launched a new diaper bank, which is another program um, that, that, that we have where we're able to not just give our food, but also help um, families and, and especially single moms who are struggling to pay for diapers. Mm-hmm. And so our new diaper bank just launched. We we're very excited about that. And, and, and I always draw from that story. I remember when we were, give, we, we, we had an event, we were giving out our one millionth diaper this past spring. 
this past summer, and um, to see this this mom who had a baby in the back seat, who was in tears, just appreciating the fact that she had that we were able to give her diapers, mm-hmm. and how hard it's been for her, especially through a pandemic and losing her job and all of that, and hearing her story and her saying thank you with her baby in the back in the back seat, um, one it rips your heart out, but two it, it makes it makes all the meetings you go to, all the things you got to do. It makes it worth it when you know that you're helping other people. It's really interesting because I feel like people that don't have kids or people that just, you know, don't even think about it. But diapers are expensive and kids go through diapers. Absolutely. It's one of those things that I think a lot of people take for granted. Um, but if you think about how much um, diapers cost on a monthly basis and if you're living um, paycheck to paycheck or some, some people are living less than that. Mm-hmm. Um, and you got to decide, do I buy food or do I buy diapers or do I buy medication or do I pay my, like we have to make those choices. Right. Um, um, the, the diapers become a big deal. And we also know diapers are, are a health risk for, for infants and for babies as well. If they don't, they, if their diapers are not being changed regularly and all of that creates a health risk, which causes that family even more money if there's a health risk. And so I think for us, as you said, we drink water, we do all the things that we do. Um, but for some people, um, just having diapers is a major, major deal. And so we, we're just fortunate to be in a position to really help people with diapers. Right. So how has your team been able to meet the growing needs for family necessity necessities like diapers through the diaper bank? Well, you know, there, there's a number of ways that, that, that we do it. So as I stated earlier, you know, it's through our food bank, it's through our diaper bank, it's through utility and rental assistance. We do financial empowerment. Um, we have three family resource centers. There's so much that that, that we do, mm-hmm. um, and so we, you know, like most other nonprofits, we have to raise money. Um, we're writing grants and raising money and bringing awareness to the work that we do, um, and because it's it's easy to fall into, especially being in Orange County, um, you would you would not think that there's levels of poverty in Orange County, but there's there's and there's a high you know high unemployment rate. There's there's food insecurity in Orange County. There's homelessness in Orange County. Um, and so for me, I look at this as a regional problem. It's not an L.A. problem. It's not a Riverside County problem. It's not an Orange County problem. We have a regional problem when it comes to poverty and dealing with homelessness. And I think, you know, for us, it's all about w- raising awareness so people understand um, how our neighbors, you know, what our neighbors are going through. Because if we're going to make a difference in our region, it includes all people. Um, so when you're dealing with a pandemic, you're dealing with racial injustice, you deal with um, um, uh, economic downturn. You're dealing with mental health issues. There's so much poverty. is so complicated. Um, so it, it takes raising awareness and all of us coming together to make a difference. Mm, so tell us how Tom Tom the diaper delivery truck came to be. Well, you know this is this is probably you know born out of a vision of one of our from our our our, our, our um, food bank director, and we had the opportunity to to um, to to we we're one of one of five food banks. In, in the state that has a um, that has it has a diaper bank, so it's our is ourselves, it's Los Angeles, it's San Diego, San Francisco, and Fresno, and so we were awarded state funding um, back in tw- in 2018 that we operationalized in 2019 and going into 2020. So we we were um, um, awarded state funding, you know, to do this, and thank God we had two heroes who really stepped up for us: Assemblymember Tom Daly and Senator Tom Umberg. That's why, thus the name Tom Tom mm-hmm. um, for our, our diaper bank truck. Uh, that's where the name co- comes from. So we affectionately call it our delivery truck, Tom Tom. Um, but you know, in, in addition to both daily and Umberg budgets requests, we have to really rally the community. Um, so we receive hundreds and hundreds of letters of support from community members um, and other partner agencies. And but but again, thanks to those two champions, along with the community support. We were able to receive funding back in twenty late twenty nineteen, and we launched earlier this year. So, how will Tom Tom help CAP OC continue to provide necessities to families in need? Well, you know, a, a lot of it has a lot to do with our partners that we have. So, we, we're going to have uh, probably around three hundred distribution centers. We we are we're hoping to hit three million diapers by the end of the year that we we've, we've given out. But it's really going to, you know, happen through our partnerships, too. And so just like with our food bank, we can never do it all by ourselves. Mm-hmm. And so it, take, it takes partnerships, other nonprofits, 
um, um, where we distribute the diapers to those non nonprofits. They they may, they distribute it out to their community, and so we, we have a similar model as we do with our food distribution. That's how we're going to really operate our our diaper distribution as well. Absolutely. I want to know why are these services so important to community members? Well, you know, as we all know, we are dealing with a pandemic. The pandemic started in March. Um, and and with the pandemic, it brings a lot of health concerns. Um, our community, our nation, the world really is really heavily impacted by this. And so since our goal is to, is to end poverty, um, we know we cannot do that without, dress, without addressing immediate needs. And so when we talk about food, we talk about diapers, we talk about, you know, utility assistance, those things um, are really, really important in providing the essentials to families. Um, um, it's, it's hard to deal with poverty but prior to a pandemic, uh, but dealing with poverty during a pandemic makes it 10 times worse for most of us. Mm. And even so, even 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 those people who you know had a job or underemployed and now unemployed, uh, many of those people who were unemployed back in March, their unemployment has now run out. And so, when you have a young family, you have children, or you're a single mom, and you are now unemployed, and your, your unemployment has run out or about to run out, these diapers become a major major resource um, for them. So we, you know, on one hand, we we are honored to be in this position to serve the community in this way. On another hand, it just shows us how, how deep um, um, the poverty problem is that we're dealing with. Do you ever stay up at night just thinking about this? Every night. Um, I, I, I don't know what an eight-hour, you know, um, sleep night is because, you know, when you're passionate about the work that we're doing and, and, um, and, you're, and you're dealing with, you know, again, I go right back to the pandemic, um, when you're dealing with a crisis and, and trying to lead through a crisis, um, some, it does keep you up at night. It keeps you up thinking because while many of us will go to bed tonight, like I will in my home, um, there's, some, there's, some, there's a family somewhere who's homeless. There's an individual somewhere who's going to sleep on the street tonight. There's a family who's, not, who's worried about where their next meal is going to come from. There's a family who's worried about where, where they're going to get diapers from. And so, um, or if their lights are going to get turned on or off, um, or get turned off. And so for us, I worry about that because when you're leading an organization of this magnitude and you see the problem day in and day out, it does make you worry. So how can the community come together and lend their support? Um, so one amazing way to do that is to um, go to our website. Um, so our, our website is capoc.org. So capoc.org. And if they, if they you know, are, are really interested in a diaper bank, you can backward slash diaper bank. You go right to our diaper bank. But there's also a donate button. There's a way. There's ways to volunteer. So there's a lot of different ways that um, that individuals can get involved in the work that we're doing. And that website, one more time. It's capoc.org. And what are some of the things that you guys are looking for? Um, it's always donations. Donations help. Um, we would not have been able to get through this pandemic without the help of corporations and individuals who really stepped up to help us supply food, supply food in other um, um, areas of need. So donations are we we live and die off of donations, and that, that, those are things that keep our program going. Um, and you know, and it, it helps it helps lift the entire community. So investing and in, in, through donations and investing through volunteerism are probably the two primary things that 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 we need um, support with. Also, how can community members in need get help? They can also go to our website um, if, if they are in need. So there's there's opportunities there for for them to. Um, 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 see what, what what their need is and what particular program that can help them. But they can also call us. And so um, for all of our other services and programs, they can visit our website, as I said, or call us at 714-897-6670. And again, that number is 714-897-6670. And our amazing staff uh, will be happy to help anyone who calls. The phone number one more time. 714 714- Eight nine seven six six seven zero. And the website? C-A-P-O-C dot org. Um, I feel like you're out there doing good work, and it takes a special individual to just start something like this, see the need and start it, and uh, just continue with it. So any way that we can help you, any way that people out there can help you, let us know. Awesome. Well, thank you for the opportunity to uh, to share to share our, the story of our organization. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.